Yes. We can see your screen, we cannot hear you yet. I think you're muted still. Can you hear me now? Yes, now we can. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm a research fellow at the University of New South Wales in Australia. And uh, I work in a research group that does mostly evidence synthesis, which is uh, systematic reviews and meta-analysis, but we also do meta-research. And on the side, we also try new ways of collecting uh, literature, analyzing literature. Uh, so this is one of my side projects. And I'm really excited about Open Alex and uh, possibilities and also all the new tools and ideas being presented in this conference. So this little pilot project is about big size teams. Uh, I will often work in collaborations of different sizes. And it seems that science done by really big teams of authors is becoming increasingly common. So I decided to use Open Alex to uh, investigate it. And uh, some additional question is like, what's the open access status of works that are offered by big teams, uh, where such authors are located, and what is the types of topics they work on. So we I don't need to introduce Open Alex, but face over 250 million of works as for on yesterday. And I used Open Alex R package in language R. And uh, I've done some counts and basically 23 million of records don't have any authors, but we still have quite a lot, but have at least one author assigned. So we can try to see how many papers have 10 authors. And surprisingly, it's just a small proportion of the whole body of literature that's stored on Open Alex. Can you think how many papers or works will have 100 authors? Not many, 43,000. We can go higher, 1,000 authors, 4,000 works. And I have these 10,000 here because when I ran my script last year, actually I found two works that have over 10,000 authors. This year they disappeared. So maybe that was one of those uh, errors that's been uh, cleaned up from the data set. So I will focus mainly on the subset of works that have at least 100 authors. So 100 and more. And I will call this subset that's big science team. 100 is a pretty big number, so we can say it's a big team. So if we look at the counts per year of works that have at least 100 authors, we can see that this was extremely rare before the end of the 20th century, but then it started growing up and we have very rapid increase in the last decade. I don't know where this spike in 2009 and 2010 came from. I don't know, it could be some types of uh, artifacts in the data sets. I'm not sure, maybe some of you know what's happening there, like 3,000 per year. Uh, but let's move on. If we only look at the recent year, 2023, there's 8, 8 million of works with one author and half million with 10 authors, 4,000 with 100 authors and more, and less and less. So we focus on 2023, and here, one of the reasons to focus just on this year is because the data seems quite patchy and incomplete for all the works, all the records. So here, I hoped actually we will have almost complete metadata about the works. And also we will see what's the current status of big team science. So out of 4,000, around 4, 000, almost 4,000 works with, from big teams, if we look at the open status, 70% will be open access publications. For comparison, we can do the same count for let's call that small teams. It's not really small, but less, less than 100 offers. Here, 42% are open access. So it seems there is something happening, but probably if you have really big team, 
you will be more prone to make your work open access. I don't know what mechanism is, it's just a pattern. But something is there. Maybe big teams are more open. So let's look at the authors. Uh, and for simplicity, I just use this simple divide between global south and north. And if we look again at just at the subset from big teams from 2023, we will find 24% of works that have at least one author from the global south countries. In comparison, small teams, less than 100, still could be quite big, but smaller, much bigger subset, but here 27% of the works have at least one global south author. So both are very similar proportions. If we look at the global distribution of the authors where these affiliations are known, it seems like people from all around the world are contributing to big teams in 2023. But as usual, there is clear domination of global North countries, especially the US. I don't know, France is very active there somehow, UK, Germany, and other big research active countries. So if we look actually at metadata about actual countries in the records, 27% of the records, it seems there are no information about the country. And 31% and have only one country per work. And I don't know if those numbers actually mean that uh, everybody's from the same country or there's no country information for all the authors, maybe just for the first author there's record of the affiliation. But still it seems like uh, around almost half will have more than one country in the affiliation meta fields. So, I run like very quick and dirty analysis of the concept fields. And it seems like the most commonly those big teams comes from the physics and other physics, medicine, uh, computer science, again, physics, biology finally coming up, astrophysics and medicine again. So, just few little conclusions from this little pilot study are there is very clear growth in the authorship where authors are from a big teams. And uh, it seems they are more prone to have open access works. And also, as usual, uh, there is clear domination of the global north countries. And I hope to develop this project in the future a little bit more, explore more of the data and also the tools. And uh, there are some issues still with data quality as noted in other presentation and also with the tools because the R package that I use, it seems like some functions stop, stopped working since the la last year. So probably some changes in, on the open Alex side caused things to stop working on the R side. Thank you very much for listening.